Okay, now we're rescuing out of the chest ascender. We're gonna bring the casualty onto me. I've climbed up his backup line. My backup is on his working line. I've already put him into his descender. I'm gonna simplify this and make this from a level two rescue out the crawl into the descender. And that means I need to lift him manually out of the chest crawl. It won't be much, it's a small distance there. So I'm gonna need something to lift. He's got his foot lip here, which is quite handy. I'll get rid of that cow's tail. Just one more thing to get caught up on. And I'm gonna use this to thread it round his sternum attachment point. The buckle can be a bit of a pain. That's why tape slings can work quite well. Just make sure that you're happy with the buckle. It's not gonna get caught on anything. Keeping it nice and low to the sternum attachment point. Good idea. Put your foot in. If you're not too flexible, move the hand descender back down so we can get your foot in there and then lift it back up until you're happier. Now I'm using my right foot, I'm gonna stand up and I'm gonna put my hand as close to his waist as I can. I'm gonna lift from the shoulder as I kick down with my right leg. Hopefully I'll be able to lift someone a lot heavier that way. Don't try and bicep curl someone, it's not gonna work. As I push down, you can kind of wrap your hat, your harness, so your helmet around here, so you don't lean back too much. There we go. Take him out of the chest descender, and then I want to pull the rope through the rig, just so that it doesn't drop down. I'm gonna sit back. Now the good thing about this is my leg is not gonna drive up anywhere because all of his weight just goes straight on to his rig or his descender. Now if he was bleeding out or screaming in pain, I'm not gonna care about this hand descender. I'm just gonna leave it there and we can always get it back at a later stage. But since it's just my old mate here, I know he's good. I can just take that and retrieve it now. Now we're back to that typical level one rescue, but we're on the same set of lines. So what I'm going to have to do is bring him onto me. And carabiners to create a hard link to go straight in to my descender carabiner. Make sure the ropes aren't going to get caught between us. And I need a backup. I'll take his so that I'm not losing any of my own equipment. And that's going to go into my D-ring. There's our two points of contact. We've got two backup devices here. Make sure and take off the right backup device. This is mine. This is his. He doesn't need his anymore. I'll take that off. Try and keep things nice and neat. And then I'm going to operate his descender. All of the weights now going to go into this hard link. Done that. We'll get him in a straddle position, make sure he's okay. Now I've got two people on one descender who could have an uncontrolled descent. Petzl are asking for extra friction if we're going to put more than 150 kilos on this type of descender. Simple way of doing that is adding extra friction through a carabiner. If you're going to use the carabiner, then close the gate, create that turn, keep your back up. I, especially because we've got two people and someone who's already a casualty. And down we come. Because I've attached him into the descender carabiner, all the weight of the casualty is not on my harness. He's actually attached to the descender. And if I want to stick him on a stretcher, I don't have to sit on top of him. I can actually release him now, bring in that stretcher and then we can get him some decent first aid, some casualty care without me having to sit on top of him to disconnect. And that is a level two rescue, which we've now simplified into a level one rescue. Got this guy down safely.